Hello and welcome to a very awesome tutorial about mechanical rigging using only constraints, not armatures. Um, now I understand that armatures use a lot less pieces and uh, less meshes, but um, I tend to think that using constraints is a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do is kind of look at an example I have here. So I have the ship, and by the way, this project file is available to download on my Patreon. I only have one more, uh, one tier now, which is $3 a month. It'd really mean a lot if you could support me there. But um, you can see that I have lots of little controls here and I can move them around and all these pieces are already like animated and this all works in local space and everything. Isn't that awesome? And you don't have to like press a certain axis, you can just hit G and move it and it does exactly exactly what you want it to do. Um, you know, and there's lots of different rigs here. You know, you can move all these things around and different things around the ship animate. And I won't go uh, too in depth into this one because this one is for my patrons, um, but I will show you how we can rig another ship today. So the one that we're going to be rigging is the Lambda class shuttle from Star Wars, uh, the original trilogy. And this is just kind of like an example. Of course, you can rig anything like a fighter jet. So let's go ahead and get started. So I will say that you can download this model from a link that I've provided in the description. Um, it's, a, it's a Mediafire link. Some guy ripped a, a lot of uh, Star Wars ships. Um, and this is just gonna be in the Empire folder. But what I realized was that this, these, uh, some of these models already have um, bones attached to a lot of the pieces and they're and they're uh, a lot of the pieces are not optimized for blender specifically so what I've gone ahead and done in this project file which I will download um, in the link in the description is I've gone ahead and pieced uh, and separated all of the pieces taken away all the armatures and modifiers uh, and I've, I've um, you know gotten the textures already and set up inside of Blender so that you know they can be used more easily. Uh, and I've done a few more things um, like model the boost and stuff like that that you can go ahead and explore. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and get to rigging. So first thing that I wanna rig are these large wings that I have right here. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and create our mesh controllers. Now you don't have to do this, we can just use empties, but um, I feel like it's, it's more fun to use a mesh controller. So what we're gonna do is go to our collection up here, create a new collection, and we're gonna call it uh, controllers. Perfect. Um, and we're actually gonna turn off the shuttle collection for now as well. Um, I'm also gonna delete this. So once we have our controllers collection selected, let's go ahead and hit Shift A and create a circle. Then we want to change the amount of vertices to seven. Then we can tab into edit mode. Uh, hit seven on the number on the on the numpad to kind of put us in the in an aerial view of this circle, uh, and we want to rotate it. We hit R and then rotate it 90 degrees. We can just type in 90 and it'll rotate it 90 degrees. Now we want to edit this to just kind of create an arrow. And so in order to do that, we want to line um, some of these vertices up. So let's go ahead and take these vertices and line them up first. I'm going to take this one and type in 0.3 on the y-axis, and then I'll move it down to this point, take this one, and also type in 0.3 on the y-axis, and then these bottom ones I'm gonna type in negative 0.3 because they are across the x-axis, and therefore they would be uh, a negative value because they're reflected. Um, and then we're gonna take these points right here, and let's see, an arrow would probably be, um, let's say 0.25 I think is a good place for these, and maybe adjust these to uh, 0.25 on the x-axis as well. And that will line all of our vertices up into this perfect looking arrow. Then we can select all of the vertices and hit F to fill it with a face. All right, now we have a little arrow. And as a matter of fact, I think this, this back part of the arrow, um, the arrow looks okay for right now, but we're gonna put text beside it and I, I kind of want this piece to be shorter. So I'm gonna you know, scooch it up just a little bit to maybe like uh, 0.3, negative 0.3, I forgot that it's reflected. Um, and that looks good to me. Okay, so we're gonna tab out of edit mode and we're gonna rename this, uh, let's say, wing. Actually, we'll name this arrow because we are going to be reusing this for multiple controllers. Uh, and then we can just, you know, shift D to duplicate it, right click to put it back in the same place. And we will turn that arrow controller off for now. Okay, so once we have that, once we have our uh, new arrow, we can go ahead and double click on it and rename it wing control. 
and we can hit enter. Uh, and now we have uh, the start of what our controller is going to be. So when we have wings, we want them to move, you know, we wanna move this controller up and down to raise and lower the wings on our shuttle. So what we're going to do is actually rotate this arrow um, to be pointing up, uh, upwards. So we're just gonna take it, hit R, uh, and let's type in negative 90, and that should uh, have it pointing uh, straight up. Then we can move it up uh, the Y axis just a tad bit like that, maybe scale it down. Then we can hit Shift E to duplicate it. Uh, and we can right click to put it in the same place. And then we can hit R and then 180 to flip it. And we can of course move it below uh, the other arrow. The other thing that we wanna do is actually put some text in here. So uh, in order to do that, we are just going to hit Shift A and we're going to add in a new text object. And then we can hit tab on the keyboard just so we can edit it. And we're gonna type in wing control, just like that. Or yeah, that's fine, I guess. Um, and then we can tab out of edit mode. And so now we have some text here, but we're gonna scale it down just like that. And also we are going to right click, well, I guess go up to object, go to convert to, and we're gonna select mesh uh, from text. So now this is a mesh. We're also going to right click on it, hit set origin, and we're going to set uh, geometry to the origin. And then we can, you know, position it, reposition it just a little bit better. We're also going to uh, take our first arrow right here. We're going to right click and we're going to hit set origin. Uh, and let's do origin to, well, yeah, origin to 3D cursor and make sure that your 3D cursor is at the uh, center of your scene. Once we have that, we can select our other arrow and our wing control text and then select our first arrow so that it is the active object. Then we can hit Control J and join them all into one mesh. But uh, this isn't um, any kind of different colors and we want them to be different colors in the viewport so that we can easily recognize this controller. Um, I, I, re I realize that this is all setup stuff and this is personal preference, but I'm just gonna go ahead and run through it as quickly as I can. So we're gonna go to the uh, materials tab and create two new materials. Uh, the first one we're gonna call arrows and the second one we're going to call, well, yeah, we're gonna call it text. Perfect. Now we're gonna go to the arrows and then go to the viewport display box. And we're gonna change the color to something very vibrant like yellow. Uh, and maybe turn the metallic up. I, I think that it tends to make it a little bit brighter when the metallic is all the way up. Um, okay, but now this is a little bit distracting. I like my wing controller to be a different, uh, different color. So I'm gonna hit tab, I'm gonna tab in edit mode, and then I'm just going to select all of the vertices associated with the text. Then we go up here to our other material and hit assign. Then I can tab out of edit mode. Then I go to the text material, scroll down to viewport display, make it all the way white and make it metallic. That way I have two different uh, materials on my text. And it looks like that I actually didn't uh, get all of the vertices in my text. So what I'm gonna do is shift Z into wireframe mode and just try and re grab all of the vertices in my text without getting any of the ones on the arrows. And then go back up to text and hit assign. And now we should be good to go. Cool. So now we have a cool little wing control arrow, um, but it's not doing us uh, anything good for right now. So what we are gonna do is hit R and then X and flip it on the 90 degrees so that it is facing the camera pretty much or facing the, the user. We're, we're just kind of creating a, a, a interesting UI for the moment. Now we can turn our Lambda shuttle back on and we wanna position this controller um, in a spot that we will be able to see. So maybe, you know, just use the, uh, you know, G and then the, the letters associated with the axes to kind of move it around your scene until you get it in a spot that you like. I'm gonna say right here so that I can take this controller and I'll be able to move it up and down. Now, next thing we wanna do is tie this all together. So we're gonna go to our controller's collection, hit Shift A and create a new uh, cube empty. Then we're going to hit one on the numpad and we're going to scale it up pretty large. And we're going to also reposition it so that it is uh, encasing our entire uh, object that we want to animate. Um, it actually doesn't have to encase the full thing. I just, um, it's easier to grab if it is. So let's see, we hit three and we can kind of adjust it a little bit. You can scale it along specific axes if you want to. I'll scale along this axis and then kind of move it up a little bit. 
Okay, so now we have a cool little cube controller, but it's not tied to anything. So what we do want to do is parent all of these uh, ship's pieces to the cube. So in order to do that, we can just, you know, hit Shift Z to go into wireframe mode. And we wanna select all of the ship's pieces. Then we can Shift select the cube empty and then hit uh, Control P to parent it to the object. So now we should be able to take this cube uh, let's shift C out of wireframe mode and we can kind of rotate the cube along um, any way we want and all of the pieces of our ship should be following it. They should all be parented to the cube, which is exactly what we want. And from now on, you want to use the cube to actually drive most of the animation when it comes to the ship. All right, we're also gonna take our wing control and parent it to the cube as well. So control P, uh, parent to the cube. Perfect. And maybe I actually wanna take our wing control and kind of drag it in a little bit. I actually like the, uh, our, our, the controllers to line up a bit more with the world. So maybe take the location along the x-axis, make it 20, take the y, um, what was it? Negative three, and the z will make it 45. All right, actually maybe I want it a little bit more forward. So negative 14, sure. Cool, and I also like to turn off relationship lines because those annoy me like crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. All right, so now we have a lot of the setup of our scene. Um, so let's go ahead and try and get a little bit more done with this. So what we're going to do is actually go into our controllers collection and create a new collection. This new one we're gonna call master controls, just like that. And let's go ahead and create another collection and we'll call this uh, we'll call this Others. And then in Others, we want to create another new collection. And we're going to call it Wings. Ah, uh, well, there's already a collection named Wings. We'll call it Wing Controls. All right. So now that we have that, this is all about organization, by the way. It's best to keep as organized as possible um, when you're doing this kind of thing. Uh, the other thing that we want to do is move our empties into, into the uh, correct collections. So we're going to take our wing control, we're going to hit M, uh, and then we're going to move it to our uh, master controls collection. Uh, same with this cube, we're going to hit M and move it to our master controls. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to go to our others collection, maybe the wing controls collection. We're going to hit one on the numpad to go into front view. And we're going to figure out where on the ship this wing will rotate. And by the way, I do have some turrets attached to that, but we will get to that in a second. So let's go ahead and actually maybe go into x-ray view so that we can see this a little bit better. All right, so it looks like our wing is going to be rotating around this large circular gear type thing right here. So we are going to create a new empty. We're gonna hit Shift A, go to empty and plane axis. Then we can uh, drag it over to the spot in the middle of this circle. So let's go ahead and select our wing again, just so that we can see it a little bit better. One thing you can do to help you line stuff up is maybe turn off the superfluous pieces that are kind of getting in the way. So I'm just gonna select them and hit H to hide them. Um, all of this landing here, junk down here, is not gonna be helpful to us just yet either. Let's see, and I, I don't wanna hide the master controller, so hit H, okay. Cool, cool. So we get one and we're gonna try and line this empty up a little bit better. We're also gonna select it and we'll make it a little bit bigger just so that we can line this up correctly. So definitely get it on that cog right in the center. That looks like a good place for it. And we're gonna have this wing rotate with this empty. Also, we wanna make sure that this empty is parented to the correct thing. So we're going to select it and hit shift select the cube and then control P to parent it to our master empty. Um, and then we can also, you know, hit seven on the numpad and line it up a bit better with the wing. Maybe in the middle over here. Th that part didn't necessarily matter, but I like it all to be in the general area um, where the real wing would be rotating around. Okay, so now that we have this empty, we want uh, our wing control to drive the animation of our empty. So in order to do that, we're going to take our empty, go to the constraints tab, and add in a transformation constraint. We're also going to uh, change world space to local space 
in both of these boxes because when we rotate and animate our ship, we want these controllers all to work within their own space, um, you know, without some weird things going on um, in terms of the coordinate systems. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit more later on. So we're gonna take this empty and we will uh, uh, change our target to the wing control um, controller that we have right here. Okay, so we're gonna scroll down to map from and we want to map the wing controls Z location like this. And as a matter of fact, uh, something that I think will, will be helpful for, the, uh, for this specific part um, is changing your coordinate system or your transform orientation to local coordinates so that you can truly see what this um, wing controls local coordinates are. So if I hit G and then Z, you can see the Z axis is actually the one that's going uh, aligned with the world Y axis. So maybe I want to hit control A and hit rotation. So now if I hit GZ, the Z axis is correct. Cool. All right, now we can reselect our empty down here for our wing. And we want to go from map from, and we want to take the Z axis location of our wing control and transform it into rotation for this empty, right? So we're going to go down here to the map from and go to the Z min and Z max values. Now, in order to do this, we have to look at the current Z values for our wing control. It is currently at 45, um, 45, I guess uh, it's a location on the Z axis. The coordinates for our wing control controller um, on the Z axis is 45. So if I want to move this along the Z axis, I can hit G, Z and kind of feel out how far I want to move this controller for the wings to go down. I'm thinking somewhere around 25, or maybe 26 is where I want uh, the wing control to stop. So we're gonna go from 45 to 26 and that is our range. So select your uh, wing empty and change the Z minimum value to your minimum Z value of your wing control, which in this case is gonna be 26. And the maximum is its current value at 45. Okay, so now what that is telling this empty is to look at our wing control Z coordinates from 45 to 26. Um, and we can use those to transform our, uh, our empty here. So we're gonna hit map two to kind of take down this menu right here. And we want to change location to rotation. We're gonna map the location to the rotation of our empty. Now, let's see, we wanna rotate our empty along its local Y axis, I believe. Yeah, so we're going to take, where it says Y axis, we can see if we, if we adjust the values here, we are rotating it along the Y axis, but we wanna pull that information from the Z uh, axis of our wing control. So we're gonna set the Y to Z on our Y source axis. The, the source for our Y axis should be the Z axis of our wing control. All right, so now we wanna move our wing control down to 26 so that we can get, get a sense of where our um, rotation is gonna be. As a matter of fact, at this point in time, uh, it would be helpful to actually parent the wing to our empty. So we're gonna select the wing, then select the empty, then we're gonna hit Control P and set the object. So now you can see if we rotate this empty, the wing is gonna follow it. Cool, so let's take the wing control, well, let's go back to the empty, and we're going to actually figure out how much we want um, this empty to rotate. Now, if you look at Google images of the original Lambda shuttle, you can see uh, in this image right here, well, let's see, this image right here, that the wings are almost, these, this, this bit part of the wing is almost straight down, and then it goes out, it juts out from there. So we're going to try and get this part of the wing to go straight down. So let's go ahead and rotate. Uh, we'll figure out the minimum value here. I want the wings to be going straight down. And if you don't want it to go straight down, of course, you can. You don't have to make it do that. But I think it's more realistic if we have it go maybe around this angle, let's say 130 degrees. So our minimum value will be 130 degrees. And our maximum value should set the empty back to zero. So now if we take this wing control and we move it around, you can see it is causing the wing to rotate. Pretty cool. But, you know, we are having to still hit G and then Z 
and move this wing control around instead of just hitting G and uh, you know being able to move this easily. So we're gonna select the wing control, go to the constraints tab, add a new constraint and select, uh, let's say limit location. You wanna turn all of these limit location values on and you wanna look at the actual values for our wing control to input here. So the location on the X value should be 20 and the maximum should be 20 as well. And the location on the Y value should be negative 14 on the maximum as well. And uh, the Z is going to be our range. So the minimum is gonna be 26 and the maximum is gonna be 45. And we want to select Effect Transform and change this to Local Space. So now we can move this wing control just by pressing G in any orientation without having to press any of the axes. Pretty cool. All right, and the way that we can get the other wing to respond to this controller is very, very easily. Um, I'll actually show you that in just a second. So I'll put this wing all the way up and uh, let's hit one on the number pad and hit, we actually duplicate this empty as a matter of fact. So we'll hit one uh, after selecting that empty and we're gonna hit shift D and drag it along the X axis, just like this. We wanna put it in the center um, of our cog over here. So kind of line it up the best you can. Let's see, maybe like, like that. That's pretty good. All right, but now you can see if we do move our wing control, well, first of all, the wing isn't parented, so let's go ahead and do that. Select the wing, select the empty, control P, object. If we move our wing control now, you can see this wing is rotating the wrong direction. So to fix that, we're just gonna take our empty um, and then go to the map two coordinates and change minimum, let's say minimum to negative 130 and see how what that does. There we go. So you just wanna kind of flip that value so that it's rotating the opposite way. Perfect, now we can move this wing control any which way and it is affecting the rotation of our wings. Super cool. But you can see we have a problem and that these turrets which are on the wings are not rotating, rotating with it. And by the way, I've also found that these turrets should only be in this orientation when the wings are down. When they're up, they should be rotated another way. So I'm gonna show you a quick little way um, to fix that. And then we're going to round out this tutorial and you can use the things that you've learned um, to kind of, you know, maybe rig the landing gear. If you still have any questions, I can release a part two if you'd like. So what we're gonna do is hit Shift A, create a new empty, make it a plane axis. And we're going to, let's see, we're gonna try and line it up with the turret's orientation. So we're gonna hit one, turn on X-ray view, and we're going to move this empty up to the turret. Now we want the Z axis to be going uh, through the turret. Um, so we're gonna rotate our empty to try and match the orientation of our turret the best we can. Let's see, I, I think it's around negative 40. And we just kinda wanna line it up. And then we can hit three, and we wanna line it up this way as well. So somewhere in the center of our turrets is where our empty should be. We can even kind of go into this view and we can hit G, let's see, Shift Z, maybe, or uh, kind of line it up a little bit better. G, Shift Z, right there. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So now that we have that, we can turn off X-ray view and we want to actually parent this empty to, uh, let's say the rotation empty. Let's, let, we'll try the rotation empty first. So we're gonna select the empty, then select our rotation wing empty for this side, and then hit Control P, and we're gonna set uh, the object. So now that empty should actually rotate with the wing, which it does. Perfect. Um, and then we're going to take our turret and parent it to that empty. So control P, object. Now our turret should be rotating with the wing. Pretty cool. So what we actually want to do is take our wing control all the way down and select the empty that the turret is parented to. Then we want to go to the constraints tab. We're gonna add a new transformation constraint, change it all to local space, uh, set the target to the wing control, and we wanna do uh, the map from values from the Z minimum of 26 
and the maximum of 45. Then we can take our map two values down here and change the uh, axis to the one that we need. So we want it to rotate um, along the Z axis. So we're gonna change rotation and we actually don't have to change the source for this because we're going to be using the Z location axis um, to transform the rotation around the Z axis of our empty. So whenever it, the wing control is at its minimum value, we actually want this empty to be rotated zero degrees. But when this wing control is at its maximum value, we are going to rotate this turret up a little bit. So if we take the maximum value and we rotate it, you can see that the turret is um, getting out of line with the wing, which is not what we want. So we wanna go over here to the order, to the uh, this default drop down menu right here. We wanna make sure that uh, Z is the, is the coordinate that comes first. So we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna go down here and choose one of these options right here. I'm gonna choose the bottom one. So now you can see our turret is now in line with the rest of our wing. Perfect. We can kind of adjust the max value a little bit more until we have this turret, you know, maybe at 90 degrees is a good value. So it's kind of aiming up just like that. Super cool. So now if we, you know, drag this down, you can see the, rotate, the turret is rotating out as our wings come down and it rotates up as our wings go up. Perfect. So now we can actually take this empty and we can duplicate it, drag it over here. And of course it's not <laughs> lining up. So what we're gonna do is uh, change the Y rotation to be 40 degrees instead of negative 40. So now the Z axis should be aiming the correct way. And maybe we can line it up a little bit better with the actual turret. That's all right. Um, and then once we have that, we want to fix it up a little bit. So we're gonna change the maximum value to zero so that we can you know, get this uh, turret paired, uh, parented to our empty. So we're gonna select the turret, then select the empty, and then hit Control P, select object, uh, and now we can go back to our empty and change the maximum value to 90. Well, actually that's gonna be the, uh, the wrong direction. So we're gonna do negative 90 because we are flipping it because it's across an axis. So now, if we take our wing control and we drag it with G, <laughs> we are having a bit of a problem. And this is something that you're gonna to have to deal with. You're gonna to have to go through and kind of, uh, uh, you know, debug your rig a little bit. So you can see that the rig that this uh, turret is parented to is actually parented to the empty for our left wing instead of our right wing. So we're gonna select this empty, then select the empty for the correct wing, control P, and then object. As a matter of fact, we're gonna <laughs> select it, hit alt P to clear parent and keep transform. You know what? Let's actually uh, change some stuff. So we're gonna zero out the uh, transformation constraint we have here. Then we're gonna clear the um, parent of our turret. So alt P, clear parent, and select our empty, alt P, clear parent and keep transformation. And now we should be able to parent it to the correct empty. So control P object, turret, turret empty, control P object, go to the empty and maximum should be negative 90 degrees. All right, now let's try and do that again. There we go. So now you can see when the wings are down, the turrets are facing out. When the wings are up, the turrets are facing up as well. So super cool. Um, and I'm going to uh, turn everything that I've hidden back on. So Alt H to turn it all back on and look at that. We can test this by taking the cube, rotating it and you know moving it and then taking the wing control and moving it. Now everything should move with it. Just, you can just hit G and move it along. Super cool. So what I'm actually gonna do is take this wing control and go to the object properties, then go to the visibility and uncheck show in renders. That way uh, this wing control will not render because it is a mesh object, not necessarily an empty. Um, and I think that's gonna be it. Of course, you can also just hide the entire controller's collection if uh, all of this stuff is getting in your way. Um, but I'm gonna just go ahead and hide the others collection. We should be um, good to go, just like that. So we can take the you know wing controller and move it all around and we get some really cool stuff. Now, if you'd like a part two of this tutorial, which would be me focusing on the landing gear over here, um, focusing on how to actually rig 
these pistons to go up and the doors to close behind it. Um, with the correct timing, uh, be sure to leave a comment down below and I can give you a, a part two of the tutorial, but, but I think this is where I'm gonna leave you um, to kind of try and do it on your own. So thank you so much for watching. I am Kecht Next and I will see you next time. <laughs>